health. To news now, President Paul Kagame has pointed out that Rwanda's economy must recover from the effects of COVID-19 pandemic moving forward, but also that people must also continue to practice measures to protect themselves from this virus. Economic experts believe that the financial sector must play an active role in ensuring that the economy has enough funds to revamp itself. Serge Nori kicks off tonight's edition with that story. The economic experts we spoke to said there is no question as to what needs to be done. We need to get the economy working and fairly quickly. Um, that, that is what will help um, us first take the first step, but also attract others. With this post-COVID scenario, the financial sector has a big role to play to get this economy back to where, where, where we should be. Uh, Rwanda's economy had been outstanding across the region. Um, and we really need to come together with financial sector leading, leading that journey in terms of supporting the economy. They play an intermediary role where they bring resources together. They need to have sufficient packages that can be able to restore all uh, sectors of this economy. Rwanda's president has however stressed that revamping the country's economy must go hand in hand with continuing to protect people's lives. Before we can allow factories to resume their normal operations, we must first assess how much progress we have made fighting this pandemic. There is no question that industries have been negatively affected by the measures, even people's families and every location where they live. Everything has been affected in one way or another. That is why we are looking into ways of identifying activities that can be allowed to resume, again, basing on our progress in fighting this pandemic. In fact, I was telling people the other day that we will hold a cabinet meeting examining the gathering of information, the figures, how much the pandemic has spread, the tracing efforts to identify the infected and anyone they could have come into contact with and possibly infected. There is also a lot of work related to all that. We must therefore look into all this and then decide how we are to proceed forward. We could allow some activities to resume, for example, the operations of those factories, whether only a few are to resume or they all do, but respecting the measures of people protecting themselves and others from the virus. The sort of protective clothes they wear, the distance they maintain between each other while at work. We believe that people will understand the need to do such things if some of the restrictions are lifted, so that slowly by slowly life can return to normal. I believe that would be how it would be done. With Rwanda's economic growth this year forecast to slow significantly because of the global pandemic, the country's leadership has no illusions as to the task it now faces. We want to see business activity internally resume. So how do we revive businesses? How do we revive the, our, our exports? How do we have our tourism uh, thrive again. It's going to be a slow process. Uh, and and uh, so we, we are taking measures along these lines, how to really inject life back into the system and allow what was happening. In the area of construction, uh, the investments we are making in the area of energy, the mining sector, and, and, and so on and so forth. Regardless of the magnitude of the task at hand, all solutions must first come from within the country itself. We must first start as Rwanda to ensure that we get our economy working as quickly as it's possible once the containment measures have been eased. Um, they need to be liquidity in the market. People need to start trading again and the banks then come in there to facilitate individuals to be able to continuously trade and that, that is what oils the economy and things start moving. Once we start trading with each other, the small trader, the big trader, manufacturing starts working, then the economy starts moving and everything falls into place. Rwanda's economy grew by 9.4% last year and the industrial sector grew by 17.7%, while the service sector also increased by 10.6%. 
The country's trade deficit had also increased, however, by 16.3% because imports had gone up by 10.6% compared to just 3.4% for exports. Adding the COVID-19 pandemic to the mix this year has therefore only complicated matters further from an economic standpoint.